Okay. Uh, so let's find the solution to each of these, then we'll go to the number line part of it. All right, I think everybody's doing fine. So that's five. 2x equals negative 6, so x equals negative 3. Uh, 3x equals 0, <coughs> subtract interval sides, and dividing by 3, we get x is 0. Okay. Number line. Just like that, there's maybe 0 as a point of reference. God bless you. 5. Put a little point at 5. Here's 0. If we go in the left direction, this is the negative direction, negative 3. And here's 0, and we don't need to go anywhere. 0 is where the solution is. these equations and graph them on the number line. Graph their solutions on the number line. Subtract 12 on both sides. Negative 2y <coughs> equals that. Divide by negative 2, y by negative 9. Yeah. Now, I've been grading the <coughs> struggling with this. Okay, so how do we cancel out this two thirds? Divide. Five. Okay. Divide by two thirds. What does it mean to divide this side by two thirds? Multiply. Multiply by the reciprocal. So we get y equals four thirds times three halves. Write that as twelve over six or two. There is a quite a bit of, I was surprised to find how much there was of um, divide by two thirds, and then the next thing I saw was four thirds times two thirds. That might be you're rushing through it too fast, or I'm not sure what, but um, making that mistake. So be careful of that. Okay. So we can graph these on a number line, and most of the number lines that I see look just like the ones we did for x, is 0, there's negative 9, and there's 0, 1, 2, there's a point there at 2, for y equals 2. So, all this stuff is pretty basic, we've learned about it before, we should know about it already, should be review what we're doing now. Um, what we're about to do, you've probably done before, but as we've talked about before, um, rather than just looking for how do I do number 13 or whatever on the homework, um, it, approach it, my primary approach will be to help you understand what this thing is and why it is the way it is. Um, so we're gonna be graphing graphs, right? Uh, I'm sure you've done that before, graphing lines. We're gonna be concentrating on lines today. Um, but we're gonna take a look at why we would even do this, what is a graph, uh, where does these x and y axes even come from in the first place? Why did we even start to use them? Okay. So, uh, and I think, the, I think the, the easiest way I can think of to explain why we would even use these x and y axes. We've solved these equations today for x, right? We found out what x would have to be. And these equations, we found out what y would have to be. There's certainly just one solution for each of these. There's only one thing that x could be or y could be in each of these equations. Okay. But how about, uh, I switch to think about it. Ponder over it. Don't wait for me to tell you the answer. What I want you to do is to look at this equation and think about the solution to this equation. I want you to solve this equation. That's what I want you to do. Solve the equation. Okay. 
that sounds like a weird thing to ask. Maybe you're in a good place. Just take that equation and all I'm asking you to do is solve it. Solve the equation. What that means to you, you decide. And of course we'll come together again and discuss it. So, one of those groups, did you guys come to like a group consensus or something? No. Yeah, zero plus equals one. What's that, Ethan? What? What did you say? Oh, x equals negative one minus y. And negative one minus y. So you got x by itself? Yes. Okay. Uh, reasonable? Yes. This is like a reasonable thing to do. Okay. Probably because we spent so much of our algebra career getting x by itself. And so that seems like that's what the solution is. Okay. Anybody else think anything else? Else? Yeah, Derek. Zero plus negative one equals negative one. Okay, so could we say that? You let x be zero. Yeah. And y be negative one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so we, we got two different ideas now. Yeah. Not that they're unrelated, but they are different. This is the solution, is one idea. This is the solution. I don't think I'm trying to pin you down, Ethan, or that group to like that is what your answer is, and and like you're, you know, that's what's representing you. Stephen? Um, you said x is negative nine, and then y. X is negative one and. Wait, x is negative nine. Oh, sorry, nine. And then y is eight. Y is eight. Okay, so that's the solution. There's a million different solutions. Are there more than a million? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Really? No. Anything. Well, not anything. What's that? Lily? I said it has to be, it has to have like one negative and one positive to get the negative one. Okay, one's got to be negative, one's got to be positive to get the negative one. Yeah. Okay. So whatever the combination of x and y are, when you plug them in, the x plus the y has to be equal to negative 1, right? Okay. So this, though it's a natural thing to do, and sometimes the thing you want to do, sometimes you want to get x by itself, or sometimes you want to get y by itself, uh, that's not the solution, it's not a solution. Okay. Let's go back to, to these equations. How do we know that x equals 5 is the solution to this equation? 2 times 5 is 10. Because what? Because 2 times 5 is 10. Because 2 times 5 is 10, because, this is very important, because if we take 5 and put it back into the original, the very original, the first equation that was given to us, it's, what's the word? Correct. Correct? Correct is a good word. Yeah. Or what that gets used uh, more often is true. Correct, true, it's hard to it's hard to say true is better than correct because they're they're very much the same. Um, same here. If we take negative three, we put it back in the original equation, the equation will be true. If we take uh, zero, put it back in the original equation, the equation will be true or correct. True. Same with these y values. So if we get to an equation like this with an x and a y, then a solution must be very similar to what we've been looking at before. A solution is what? In this in this case, what is a solution? Not this specific solution, but like a, a definition of a solution or a way to know that you have found a solution, Derek? You know you have to have everything whatever you put in it has to be equal negative one. Okay, in this case, whatever you put in, meaning implying that we have to have an x and a y, right? So a couple of numbers, one for x and one for y, and when you put them in, in this case, you get a negative one. Or in general, when you put them into the equation, you get a true equation. OK? All right. So we've got lots of solutions, an infinite number of solutions? Yes. OK. So we're going to talk about graphing today, like I said. And one of the reasons, one of the main reasons, is being able to keep track of all of the solutions to this equation. So um, let's get one more solution to this equation. Yeah. Um, y equals negative one minus x. Okay. I want, okay, I want you to listen real close. I'm sorry. Okay. 
a solution, let's write it down, a solution uh, is, let's say, a set of numbers. Okay, so first of all, a solution is actually numbers. Right? Actual values for x and y. So a solution is a set of numbers that when you plug them in, the equation is true or correct. Now, these are the, the ways you can isolate one of the variables, so the one the variables on one side by itself. This is the way to solve for x, to get x by itself, and this is the way to get y by itself. And I know that the word, to say we solved for x and that we found a solution, those are different things, and I know that can be weird, that we use similar words, okay? Uh, the solution, though, or a solution, is an x and a y, that when you put them in there, or there, or there, you get a true equation. Okay. So can we get another solution? Eric? Uh, X equals negative three, and then Y equals two. Okay, there's another solution. Okay. One limitation of this, one drawback of doing it this way, writing down x is equal to zero, y is equal to negative one, there's a solution. Here's another solution, there's another solution, is that it takes up a lot of space. It takes up more space than it could. It could take up less space. We could do something like this. We call that a table. We've done tables before. We talked about functions in chapter one. We've done tables, okay? This table could look like this, zero, negative one, just right across from each other so that we know that when we put in zero, we should get negative one for y. 9 for x means an 8 for y, and negative 3 for x means a 2 for y. Still a different way would be to write them in parentheses with a comma like that. Okay. Hmm? And we can graph them, and we will graph them. We'll talk about that. Um, negative 9 comma 8, negative 3 comma 2, or we could graph these solutions, okay? Now, before we get into that, I just wanna now tie it into how we started the class. Okay. Now the solutions are not just x equals, not just y equals, but x is this and y is this. At the time that x is this value, y is this value. <coughs> if we wanted to graph just x, we could do that with a, a simple number line. If we wanted to graph just y, we could graph that with a single number but we want to graph two values at the same time in the same place. So we can use this number line, this can be zero, whatever, and then we go in the negative direction over here. Let's say we're gonna look at this solution right here. We're gonna graph that. That's called an ordered pair because the order of the, the numbers appear in the parentheses, it's important. The first one is always x and the second one's always y. So if we want to graph this solution, we can come over to x is negative 3. Okay? But now, we, like I had no way to convey to you that y at the same time is 2. So how can we resolve that problem? Any ideas how I can show you that when x is negative 3, y is 2? Here? And if you have negative 3, then you add 2 with negative 1. And that's why you get that minus 3. Okay. Um, what I'm saying is, <coughs> if just x being negative 3 was like that, that was it, that was the solution, you could graph it on a number line. But now the solution is not just x, it's not just y, but it's a pairing of x and y together. They are the solution. Steven? So would you go up? Okay, so the horizontal direction could represent the x value, and the vertical direction could represent the y value. Okay? So. You 
go negative 3 for x, and then if we go in the positive direction, if we let up be the positive direction, <coughs> seems natural. Put a point right there. Negative 3, 2. So by putting a point like at the intersection of x is negative 3 and y is 2, it tells us that for this equation, when x is negative 3 and y is 2, the equation is true. And we can do this other one, 0, negative 1. How do I show that x is 0? Put the intersection here? Yeah. Okay, yeah. x is 0, but at the same time that x is 0, I want to show that y is negative 1. All right, and go down. So just go straight down. We don't go left or right at all because x is nothing. x is 0. Okay, x has a value of 0. So we don't go into the negative region, we don't go over to the positive region, we stay right at 0 and go down 1 for y is negative 1. That's 0, negative 1. Even negative 9, 8, we don't quite have space for that, but we can graph all the solutions that we want. Um, how about x is negative 1? What would y have to be? 0, so negative 1, 0. That's a solution. <coughs> how about x is negative 2? What would y have to be? 5. 5? Okay. Yeah. Wait, no, one. you got to add them together and get negative 1? I'll give it 1. 1? <laughs> yeah. Negative 2, 1. Uh, what if x is 3? Negative 4, 1, 2, 3. And negative 2, 3, 4. So, one of the main motivations in the history of math, uh, and I imagine Rene Descartes, who is, gets credit for inventing this coordinate system, one of the reasons was you've got, you've got these equations, and the solutions aren't just one number. X is this, or Y is this, or Z is this. If X is one thing, then Y can be something else. If we change what X is, that changes what Y is. Okay. So we want to show that when x is this thing, y has to be this thing, so that the equation can be true. We want to graph two things, not just one thing, and that's why we have two number lines in the same place. And that's all the Cartesian coordinate plane is. It's just two number lines perpendicular to each other. Okay? And now I just want you to get um, just some practice with the basics. And I want you to, um, in 4.1, one. I want you to do um, three So point A, here it is. All right. We always do the x value first. X is horizontal. You can see by the label x is on the horizontal axis. And second, we do the y. So if I want to get to A from the origin, this is called the origin. We move to the right, 3. And then down 2, that would be negative 2. 3, negative 2. Point B, 
be. We don't go anywhere in the x direction. We don't go horizontal at all. We just stay there. That would be zero. Go zero in the x direction. If we're down one, that would be negative. Uh, so the horizontal, if you go down C, there it is. Over four, up four, to the right four and up four. four Both positive moves. Negative four. D, negative four. And up three, that's positive three. Okay. Nothing, probably nothing. You or you guys? Probably see that before. It's not bad to take a moment. Review the structure of these ordered pairs and such. Okay. Let's talk about some specific labels on this Cartesian coordinate plane. <coughs> okay. Does anybody know what the word plane means? It could be physical, like it could actually be something flat. It could be uh, kind of imaginary or... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Something weird, something about imaginary? No. <laughs> it doesn't have to be physical. It could be like the, we could say the plane of the doorway, right? You cross through that plane, through that imaginary flat surface that you walk through to get to the door. Yeah. Why do they call that? Well, that's going to be spelled differently. No, it's not. <laughs> 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 um, I don't know. Maybe you can look at that. Um, okay. So, this is called the coordinate plane. This is the x axis, this is the y axis. Uh, where the x axis and y axis meet, what's that coordinate? Origin. What's the coordinate I said? Oh, zero, zero. 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 <laughs> and the name? Origin. The name origin. is the origin. Okay. The origin. It's where everything starts. It starts there, we move to the right, or we move to the left, or up or down from there. That's our reference point. Okay. Um, this is the positive direction for y, this is the negative direction, this is the positive direction for x, the negative direction for x. And by putting these two number lines like this, we've divided the plane into four quadrants. Quadrant one, because okay, that's the most basic of graphs. When we were just starting to learn graphs, we would graph like how much time it took and how far we went, and those were all positive things, okay? And then we use the idea of maybe one negative value, then both of them can be negative. Okay, so one, two, three, and four. So if we were asked where something was, like where is the point C? Which quad quadrant is point C in? One. 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 And what quadrant is point F in? One. It's right in between. It's not in the first. It's not in the fourth. It's not in either. It's just on. Are you okay? What's it on? The on the x-axis.
hash what a function is. So I'm giving you this function right here, and I'm writing this down. We're going to discuss what that means, remind ourselves, because we've talked about functions before, but I do really need that we've kind of forgotten exactly what a function is. Okay? Um, so can anybody give me any part at all of what a function is, what makes a function a function? function has an input and an output, something goes into the function, something comes out of the function, okay? Uh, and a function does that in a really special way, in such a way that when you put something in, only one thing comes out, okay? Uh, you like candy kind of? Yeah. You do? I like extra credit, too. Oh. Yeah. Which one do you want? Extra credit. Okay, I'll get some extra credit. Good job, guys. Good job oh. keeping oh, notes. Do you remember those notes are? So a uh, a function is something that takes input in and puts output out, and it does it in such a way that every input only has one output. Okay. Um, given that, can you, can you remember what this D stands for and what it means? Domain. Domain. What is the domain? Uh, oh, it's the input. 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 It's the domain collection domain. of all the inputs. Domain. <coughs> domain. <coughs> domain. <coughs> It's not just the output, it's all of the outputs, yes. right? All the outputs. Oh, great, 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 great. So the domain is the set of all the inputs. So this is what I have said will be the domain of this function. So you could use lots of other things in this function. I'd say I'm restricting the domain to these four numbers. So for that domain, I'd like you to find for all of those inputs, find all the outputs, okay? and graph the results, so graph the input-output order pairs that you get from these inputs. Oh, so, wait, we can do it from there. So why don't you get back in those groups of four and four, and three and three and three and four, and discuss exactly that and other questions. Let's uh, get back together here. Uh, this is the domain, it's the set of all the inputs. So these things are inputs. All right, so we're going to use them as inputs. And where do we input things? Usually, where do we input things? At the x place. At the what? X At the x place. Where the x is, that's usually the thing that goes in. Right? First, you put things in, and then things come out. And it's like an alphabetical order. First thing, thing goes into x, and then whatever y is, then we get to y. So 2y plus 3 times, let's use the first input, 0, 12, 2y equals 12y equals 6. Right, so we could uh, keep track of our outputs, or inputs and outputs over here. 0, comma 6. We can do the same thing for 2, 2y plus 3 times 2 equals 12, 2y plus 6 equals 12, 2y uh, equals 6y equals 3. So when we put in 2, we got out 3. Okay. 2y plus 3 times 4 equals 12. 2y plus 12 equals 12. 2y equals 0. y equals 0. So we put in 4. Got out zero. Last one, 2y plus 3 times 6 equals 12. 2y plus 18 equals 12. 2y equals negative 6. y equals negative 3. We put in 6, we got out negative 3. Then 
this number line will keep track of our x values. And at the same time, this one will keep track of the y values. The x value will keep track of on here. The y value, put your phone away, please, will keep track of right here. Okay? So 0, 6, 0 would be x. That would be don't go any direction in the, uh, in the horizontal. Let's stay right here and then move in the positive 6. This next one, 2 comma 3, move to the right 2, move up 3. <coughs> move to the right 4, don't go up or down, just stay right there. And 6, 4, 5, 6, uh, negative 3. Also, now have the experience of taking an equation, finding some uh, solutions to that equation, really, or taking inputs and turning them into outputs, and then graphing them, drawing a picture of these solutions, uh, where you can track of the x value and the y value by putting a point at that, that intersection of x is 0 and y is 6. <coughs> So, how do you feel about that? So, give me a like a one to five rating of four. Yeah, cool. Four. So hold up your hand so I can see. Yeah. Them. Well, with this equation stuff and graphing the equation stuff, the solutions. Six is good. Okay. So let's move on. So that's that's four point one. It's the basics of what the coordinate plane is. Uh, that we have these coordinates, these ordered pairs. Uh, the first one is x and the second one is y, knowing which direction is positive, which direction is negative, and what a point on the graph means, uh, or point on the coordinate plane means. Um, okay. And uh, being able to take inputs and turn them into outputs and then graph that this input gives this output and uh, put, that, put that on the coordinate system. So now we're going to uh, we'll draw graphs of equations. here like I've done before and tell you that right now in this class, on this day, at this time, you have uh, an opportunity. Okay. You can say to yourself, I have done this kind of stuff before and you likely have done it before and you'll say, I already know how to do it, so I'm just going to do it and be done with it and that way I can be done with my own way. Okay. But you also have the opportunity of may be getting a new perspective on what a graph is. And I really highly recommend that you learn and internalize what a graph actually is. Too often, and this is a mistake that I made in high school as well, and, and into college, I thought there's an equation, and that graph has, or that equation has a graph, and all I need to know is how to graph that graph. You tell me how to graph it, and I will graph it. And I did not realize that there was a connection between the equation and the graph beyond that. Right, so I want to tell you what a graph actually is first. But first of all, this is not a graph right here. A lot of times we call this a graph because we call it a graph paper. A graph, it's not a graph. A graph is actually something you draw on the coordinate plane. Okay, that shape that you draw is the graph. Right, so that's the first thing, just a little vocab. Um, so to, to get started, 
what we're going to do is find some solutions to this equation, and we're going to graph those solutions on this coordinate plane. So, did anyone find a solution to this equation? Feel free to do it any way you want. Find a solution to this equation. What should happen after you're done doing it? You should get 10. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So 16 minus 6, that's 10, and it equals 10 like it should. So that's a solution. How do we graph that solution? Eric? When you go over 8 to the left. 8 to the left. And when you go. No, I'm at the right. To the right. Only 6. You mean 6? Yeah, or 8. 8. Go over 8. Yeah. And then go up one. Up one. Is there any anybody have anything discussion about that? Does everybody agree with that? Okay. Should we go the other way around? Because y is eight. Yeah, the thing that you made eight was oh, y, not x. Right. So y should be eight and x should be one. X is 1 and Y is 8. Keep it that way. Any other no. solutions? Six times you said, oh, yeah. unless I just heard you, y is negative like one and x is two. Yeah, I did. So maybe it could be a negative two. A negative two, which makes this a positive 12, which makes this a positive 10. And so x is negative two and y is negative one. Negative two, negative two, negative one. Uh, y equals 5 and x equals 0, that, that's pretty easy. Yeah. Right? x is 0. Yeah. That's easy to, to do that. And then you just have 2y equals 10. Yeah, y were 5 in that case. And that would work great. So x is 0 and y is 5. Any other solution?
Okay, so you just put a number in for two and solve for y. That's good too. That's a that's a way to find solutions for sure. So what do you find when you put an x is two? Uh, two. Y is negative one. Mm -hmm. You put in, let's see what you got. solutions are there? Bajillions. Bajillions, lots. <laughs> and you can't come up with one more? <laughs> Hildy? I put, um, never mind, you already did it. Okay, we got yours already. Mm -hmm. Ethan? Uh, 2 times 5 minus 6 times 0. I said that already. We got x is 0 <laughs> and y is 5. x is 0, y is 5. <laughs> x is 2 and y is 11. It's almost off of our graph or off of our coordinate plane, but we were able to find it. Yeah. Um, I did y was 14 and x was 13. Okay, y was 14. That one does go a little bit beyond what we have space for. But have that x is negative 2 and y is negative 1? Two, 2 negative 1? I thought you said negative 2. Yeah. But when we put in 2, we got 2 for x. Okay. <laughs> what? You got one, Jared? Can I go? Do you have one? Yeah, y equals 50 and x equals 15. Okay, we're going to stay, try and stay on the, like, the size of the coordinate plane that I have, but that's valid. Yeah. 
That X and Y, I'm assuming it's valid. Yeah, it's it's the the matter correctly. Yeah. X is one, Y is one. One, negative eight. We have, we, we have one at x equals one and y is eight. Now, it sounds like you just got it, like a negative mixed up, right? Yeah. Um, since we already have a point, <coughs> let's think about this. Maybe the, the, the person who got one eight was the person who's incorrect and one negative eight is actually the correct one. Look at, look at the other points and tell me which you think is the right one, one eight or one negative eight? One eight or one negative eight? Even if you didn't do the math, what would you think? You think one eight is correct or one negative eight is correct? Why would you think one eight is correct? Because <laughs> these other dots <laughs> seem to be following a pattern from here to there to there to there, and one eight seems to fit with that one negative eight would be out of line. Not fitting that pattern. That's another feature of graphs. When we graph the, these uh, the solutions to these equations, we start to see a pattern emerge. Okay, and certain kinds of equations make certain shapes when you graph them. And what shape does this graph seem to be taking? When we graph this equation, the solutions to this equation, what shape does it seem to have? A line. A line. Okay. okay. Um, then let's see. Following that pattern, you think that maybe let's see. I think that negative four, since these are uh, spaced out by two. Negative four, negative two, four, six, seven. I didn't do any of the math. I didn't plug those in yet. But do you think that's the solution as well? Maybe. Maybe. Not definitely not. Why do you think maybe it is? Well, you gotta put it back. You gotta put it in there to figure it out. You're absolutely right. You have to put it back into the equation to find out for sure. Yeah. But what makes you think? Did you think maybe like probably it's a solution? Yeah. Why do you think probably it's a solution? Actually, no, I don't. Actually, I don't know. Actually, don't know. Does anybody feel like that's probably a solution? Why do you think it's probably a solution? It looks like it's in line. If, if this truly does make a line, if we continue that line here, it looks like that would be on that line. Right. We have this point at negative 3, negative 4, mm -hmm. negative 2, negative 1. Uh, this point is 0. Let's say that you don't put negative four, negative seven back into the equation, which is definitely, Derek is right, it's the standard, the gold standard for finding a solution. If you think that this is a solution and you want to prove it for sure, you've got to plug it back into the equation to know for sure. Okay? But can you give me, knowing that all of these are solutions, can you give me a convincing argument just from like the picture, just from the picture? That negative four, negative seven would also be a solution. Yeah, you know, I checked it. Just from the picture, not from the equation. What? Well, the x goes up to one undergoing, and then the y goes So every time we move, let's let's say here, because we don't have one in between here. So if we move over one on the x direction, we move up three in the y direction. And if we move over in the, one, in the x direction, 1, we move up 3 in the y direction. For all the points that we know for sure are solutions because we've already checked them. Uh, come down here. We can go the other direction. Go down 3 in the y direction and move to the left 1 in the x direction. Does this next one that I'm saying might be a solution and probably a solution, does that fit that pattern? Yeah. Move down 3, that's negative 7, and to the left 1, that's negative 4. Yeah. It does fit that pattern. Okay. Uh, so that's another thing about graphs. We notice these patterns, these shapes that the graphs start to take. And we say, well, if I pick a point that's, like if I draw that line and I pick a point on that line, that would also be a solution. Okay? 
at least I really feel like it should be, and it turns out that we're correct. If we were to graph all these, or connect all these points, I'll just keep going down like that. Okay. Then if we, if we keep following that pattern, all the points down this direction will be solutions. If we follow that pattern and go in that direction, all of those points will be solutions. Called extrapolation. We found some solutions in here. And if you move outside, right to the right and to the left, and look in those directions forever, it's called extrapolation. We're going outside, uh, extra, outside. There's also interpolation, meaning that do you think there's some solutions between the solutions that we found? Like, uh, here's one, maybe one half, comma, that looks like a six, right? One half of six. One half for x and six for y. Does that seem like that would work? <coughs> Let's see. times six minus six times one half. Two times six minus six times one third. That's twelve. Minus what's six times one third? Two. Two. And that is ten, like it should be. So the point one third comma six <coughs> is a solution as well. And about it, by connecting all these points that we have found and saying that points on that line should be solutions, what we really have is, is not so much points and a line between the points, but this line actually, you can really think of it as we found tons and tons of solutions and we graphed all of these points, okay? and we've graphed all the solutions so closely together that all those points start to merge together melt together, melt together, and they are the line. The line is the collection of all the points, such that, that those points, that x and that y, when you plug them into the equation, makes the equation true. Okay. This graph is not so much a point and a line connecting them, but the line itself is the collection of all of the points where that x and that y are so a solution to the equation. <coughs> And so I would be surprised if, if each one of you, or even a small number of you, walked away with this perfect understanding of what a graph is. Uh, but if you could get some idea of that connection, more than this just, there's an equation, I know that the graph should look like this, how do I graph it, that's how I graph it, I don't really understand that there's this connection. You could walk away with some understanding that a graph this is the graph. This red line that we drew is a graph. This, all this other stuff, that's just the paper where we drew the graph. Okay. Graph is a picture of all the solutions <coughs> of the equation. Okay. That's what a graph is. It's a picture of all the solutions. So we, we have this kind of an equation where a number times y, a uh, number times x equals a constant. Uh, we, we graphed it, and what kind of shape did we get? Line. What? A straight line. Okay. So if we were to try and graph um, 
3x plus 2y equals 8. Just, this is called uh, inductive reasoning. We had one equation that looks like this. And another equation that, would you say that looks similar to the previous equation? Yeah. In what way is it similar? Got an x and a y, you got a number times x, yeah. plus a number times y, yeah. equals some number. Yeah. Right? x is to the first power, it's not x squared, it's not y squared. So just a number times x and a number times y equals a number. Add those together, you get a number. Um, what kind of a shape do you think this graph would make, or this equation would make? That equation and this equation are similar. You think their graphs would be similar? Yeah. You have a guess, just a wild guess of what this graph's shape might be. Derek, also a line. Yeah. Universal symbol for line. Something like this. Okay. Uh, well, let's see. Right. So I want you to now take the information that we've had previously. Let's <laughs> draw some points. Right, graph some points, some solutions to this equation. See if the same kind of a pattern emerges. So we're making slow progress. Alright. Uh, did someone give me a solution to this equation? Is this a solution? Negative two ten. Negative two ten. So three times negative two. Plus two times ten. Ten. Negative two ten. Right? Maybe. Hold on. Okay, let's, let's just see. Negative six. I think it might be plus twenty. Twenty Hold minus on. six, that's twelve. Oh, you gotta speed up again. <laughs> Hang on. I think you can fix it. Cameron, I saw you had one. <coughs> positive two one. Two one. Okay, three times two plus two times one. That's six plus two, that is eight. So two comma one is the solution. Two comma one. <coughs> two, one. Good. Yes. Eight negative eight. Eight negative eight. I, I would love to graph that. I just, I've already made this one to one, right? One, and I don't have, I can't go negative eight. Wow. In that direction. Let's say, and somewhere down there is eight, negative eight. It's just, we can't see it, it's way down there. Yeah, Dawson. Uh, four, x equals four, no, eight, 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 negative two. So four, negative two. So three times four, plus two times negative two, three. plus 12, minus four, that's eight. So four, two. Does it look like they're making a line so far? Yeah. Well, of course they do. Any two points can make a line, right? Yeah. So we need to get some more to see if we're right. Garrett? Uh, negative six and five. Negative six and five? Negative six and five. Let's see. If we go negative six, negative six and five, does it seem to, yeah. would you believe it? It should be, it should be a, uh, Well, what about that makes you feel like that's not correct? Because it's not, it's not in that line. Yeah. We're kind of assuming it'll be a line, and it's not fitting in that line. And so if it is a line, that makes it fit. Zero, two. Zero, two. Zero, four. Zero, four. That's a solution. Uh, Zero, zero, four definitely is. What did you say? Uh, something went, something went off here. Two, three, four. Three, four. Four. Oh, four. Negative two. Who gave me four negative two? Yes, it was. Oh, 
Yeah. 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 So six negative five? Yeah. Six negative five. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, negative five. One, two, three, four, five. These seem all to be solutions? Yes. Why is that? Because they're all on a line. And we suspected that we were going to make a line when we graphed it. And it turns out we're right. So it turns out that anything that looks like this, a number times x plus a number times y equals some other number. What kind of a graph are we making with these? What kind of shapes are we getting? Line shapes. We're getting line shapes. Line graphs. Line shapes. Yeah. So that's why these are called linear equations. Because their graphs are lines. So when you get a linear equation, you're supposed to graph it. You know that you should get a line. If, if you can write it like that, ax plus b, y equals c, that's the graph of a line. What's the minimum amount of information you need to draw a line? Three. X, Three Y. Three coordinates. Three coordinates. Oh, yeah. yeah. Could we do with, is that enough? Is three enough? No. <laughs> yes. Do we need more than three? Three is the minimum. Three is the minimum? Can we do less than three and still get a line? No. <laughs> yes, well, but they do. Huh? Is three the minimum number of points you need to draw a line? Yes. No. 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 Two. Okay, now, three would be the minimum maybe to make us feel like it's supposed to be a line. But if we know we're supposed to draw a line, we only need to know two points, right? If I know this one, and I know this one, the line goes to those two points. Oh, yeah. But that's not as accurate. If you did all your math right and you know that it's supposed to look like a line, it's as accurate as three. Well, I prefer three, because I feel it's accurate. Okay, you feel welcome to do three. Yeah. Equation? How do we know it's a linear equation? <coughs> if you don't know, then don't say anything. Okay. If you think you might know and have some kind of a suggestion, that is useful. So, what kind of suggestion you might have to say, I know this is a linear equation because. I don't know for sure, but because of the y and x in the equation. Okay. A y and an x in the equation? That's good. Uh, the y and the x are y, not squared, not to the third, not to the fourth, but y to the first power, x to the first power. <coughs> and we're adding them together. Maybe we have a number times x and a number times y. Anything that looks like this, ax plus by equals c, anything you can write like that is a linear equation. Okay. <laughs> so since it's a linear equation, that means that the line should, or the graph should be a line. The graph should be a line. And what's the minimum amount of information we need to draw this line? Two mm -hmm. points. How do we find these two points? Oh. Numbers. Plug in the some cool. numbers so that the x and the y that we plug in make it 12. Like 3 times no, 3 and y is 4 and x is 0. Y is 4 and x is 0. That was really pretty clever, right? Because yeah. if we get rid of this, it's easy to see what this would happen. 4 plus nothing else. 
So x is 0, y is 4. Can we find another solution? 1 and 1? 3 plus 4? 3 plus 4 is 7. Oh, sorry. You're doing 3 times 4. Yeah. 8 negative 3. 8 and negative 3? Okay. So that would be 24 minus 9. Four minus nine. Oh, negative three. Negative three. <laughs> negative three. Uh, negative twelve plus twenty-four. Yeah, that's twelve. Okay, so zero four. Negative three eight. Oh, I don't have room for eight. It's way up there. If you had more room, you could definitely graph negative 3, 8. Um, what if we kept going this direction? Uh, if we went to 3, what do you think the y value would be? Remember that pattern we noticed earlier? We move over. How many, move, how many do we move over from this point to get to this one? To the right, how much? 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. And how much do we move down? Wait, what's that? That's at eight. Oh. We move down to four. Four. So we move down four. So we go over three and down another four. Yeah. <laughs>